Good morning, folks. Big news day. A CME is heading at Earth, so is a coronal hole stream. We've got great articles out about the cosmos, climate forcing, solar magnetism, and earthquakes, but let's begin over at spaceweathernews.com. We're looking at the last day on our star, beginning with the central filament collapse and hydro flare solar tsunami eruption we looked at yesterday. Not much else took place on the Earth-facing half. Now, let's break down the coronagraph images, starting close in with C2. This is what we saw yesterday with the updated images. And you can now see that the CME is so broad it is about 80% of a halo eruption, meaning we've got plasma heading at Earth. Backed out in C3 frames, there is really no question about yesterday's analysis. The primary ejection cloud is still partially hiding behind the blocking disk, and in terms of timing, both NASA and NOAA have now weighed in, both in agreement with yesterday's analysis. Sun is central in these endless spirals, Earth off to the right with Stereo A and B spacecraft on there as well. And they expect the impact about the time we're doing this new show Friday morning. NASA doesn't say much different. Definitely an impact coming, but they have it about 12 hours behind. Either way, this eruption itself is not terribly powerful or at all scary. But what else might be going on when it arrives? Well, we probably won't have solar flares as we remain flatlined with the Earth-facing quiet effect not letting anything happen, even from bipolar sunspot groups. It is unlikely to be plasma filament related as they aren't in position. Departing here as the sun is tilted 90 degrees and tilting the other way, we see the next set of filaments is still cresting the limb this morning. No, the big story could be in the solar wind, and true enough, the purple line, plasma speed, indicates that right now we are on a calming trend, but... We likely have an incoming coronal hole stream due in the coming days. The only chance for significant geomagnetic storms would be if it impacts within about 24 hours of the CME, consecutive impact scenario. Meanwhile, the electron storm is continuing. We remain in low levels, but this is indeed the third straight day. Not expected to change much today, either. A new study from CERN gets a golf clap from the EU community as dozens of papers have been coming out against dark matter and in favor of electrical mistakes being corrected, we have the dark matter hunters yet again failing to find even the slightest shred of one of the particles expected under the paradigm. Big news for those who aren't favoring dark matter. Speaking of which, if you're thinking mainstream solar physicists don't have their heads in the electric game 100%, Check out this paper with tons of amazing images about solar magnetism and this. We're zooming in on the labeling of a current sheet in the corona down to the photosphere. Could you imagine that happening five years ago? Folks, at this point, there are no more highway exits before realization of an electric star. They are on their way. Think that was out there? How about forest fires are likely to be net cooling factors for Earth? As always, the computer models show nothing but warming, no matter what happens in the atmosphere. But when they actually went and looked, they found an incredible lifting of brown carbon to high altitude where it has a disproportionately greater cooling effect on the climate, despite what happens below and to the plant matter on the ground. Lastly, folks, scientists took virtually all available data about earthquakes and the Earth, put it in a supercomputer, and have declared this may one day help them predict earthquakes. Well, I cannot downplay their coming to the same realization I did about subducting plates being literally everything when it comes to big quakes. I will remind everyone that the available information can already predict earthquakes using the subduction action to forecast. No supercomputer needed. Learn all about it and how to predict earthquakes yourself by watching the Observing the Frontier 2017 videos. First one is the earthquake one. Lastly, folks, if anyone out there is into astrobiology and advanced life potential outside of the Earth, our buddy Suspect Sky released a video on Tabby's star. The megastructure candidate began changing light patterns again this week, and to say the astronomer community is freaking out a bit is a bit of an understatement. Don't miss it if you subscribe there. And speaking of observing the frontier, observing the frontier 2018, remember that registering before July 15th gives you the chance to win a free hotel stay for the conference. It's like holding a molten rock, by the way, waiting to reveal the speakers who are coming. We've got more weather concerns after tornadoes dropped in the U.S. again last night. We've got the world's weather and null school atmosphere runs, followed by shots of our star to close. We'll do this all again tomorrow, right here, but right now it's 5.15 a.m. in the new Valley of the Sun. Eyes open, no fear. Be safe, everyone.